This video demonstrates the eyelids bearing orbital eccentrition in a 55-year-old male with orbital extension of conjunctival squamous cell carcinoma, also known as ocular surface squamous neoplasia. Orbital eccentrition should be performed under general anesthesia. After the patient has been prepped and draped, the incision marking is placed 2 mm behind the lash line and joining them at the medial and lateral commissures. A sterile piece of gauze is placed in the conjunctival cul-de-sac in conjunctival tumors as in our case to avoid maceration of the tumor. Three traction sutures with 4O silk are placed through the upper and lower tarsi to provide traction on the orbital contents. Incision is then made with a radio frequency probe along the skin marking. Dissection is carried in the preceptal plane which decreases the likelihood of violating the orbital septum which is especially important in our case where the tumor is present in the anterior orbit. Also it spares the orbicularis muscle which provides an excellent vascular supply to the skin flap. Dissection is done till the orbital rim is reached and the periosteum just outside the arcus marginalis incised. Periosteal elevators are used to dissect the periosteum of the bony orbit, beginning at the orbital rim and continuing all the way back to the orbital apex. Along the superior rim, dissection is gently carried around the supraorbital notch. The supraorbital and supratrochlear neurovascular bundles are identified and cauterized. Subperiosteal dissection is then carried from anterior to posterior lacrimal crest and beyond. Dissection should be performed carefully along the medial wall so as to not fracture the thin lamina papyracea. After negotiating the frontozygomatic suture with gentle dissection, zygomaticofacial and zygomaticotemporal neurovascular bundles are identified and cauterized. Dissection should be performed carefully along the orbital floor so as to not fracture the thin bone and create a communication with the maxillary sinus. The sac is approached by dissecting medial to it and dividing the common canaliculus and orbicularis attachments. It is dissected from the lacrimal sac fossa and divided from the nasolacrimal duct with cautery. Further deeper along the medial wall, anterior and posterior ethmoidal vessels are identified and cauterized. In the infratemporal orbit, the inferior orbital fissure is encountered and penetrating vessels divided with cautery. Next, the infraorbital nerve is identified and cauterized. A pair of curved enucleation scissors is then introduced into the posterior orbit. The optic nerve superior orbital fissure contents and posterior orbital tissues are cut.
Hemostasis can be obtained with ice cold wet gauze, pressure and cautery. The exposed nasal lacrimal duct is obliterated by cautery to decrease the risk of post-operative fistula formation. If necessary, additional hemostasis is achieved with surgicel or bone wax. The socket is carefully inspected for any residual tumor tissue. The adequacy of resection may be judged with the aid of frozen section control. The resection of additional orbital apical tissue may be required. The eyelid flaps are reapproximated in two layers. Orbicularis is closed using 4 vicryl and the skin using 6 silk. Aspiration of the socket for any blood or serum is done using a 10 ml syringe every day till a dry aspiration is obtained. The socket usually heals quickly over the course of 3 to 6 weeks and is ready for a prosthesis at the end of 6 to 8 weeks.